What is going on, my peeps? It's Miss Wolf here. Got my Diet Mountain Dew, if you watched my last video. About, no, you probably didn't see it yet. Anyways, I wanted to include a non-fiction book that I enjoy. But if you remember, when I read parts of this book, let me show you. It's called Why Fly Guys. So Fly Guy's funny. I like a lot of his books, okay? But also, if you look at the cover, he uh, he answers all these questions. Yes, there's all these questions in the book. And then Fly Guy explains them. And it's awesome. And it makes sense. And it's in a way that, like, you can learn really cool things. So if I go through this, look at the table of contents. Look at all the things. I'm not reading this whole book today. I chose like four, maybe five small passages that explains things that I thought were interesting. Usually if you look at the table of contents here, um, in like the, in like a colorful something, it shows science project. I, I kind of wanted to, the pick books that had that. And also, if it wasn't a science project I enjoyed, I usually picked an activity that goes with it or something. So I just wanted to read like four or five things that I thought were super interesting from this book. But before you even get started and look at the table of contents, look at it, it says, a boy had a pet fly named Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name, Buzz. So Fly Guy. So Buzz was the name of Fly Guy's owner. I wonder why flies buzz. Do you know why Fly Guy? Buzz had a lot of questions. Luckily, he and Fly Guy were about to get some answers. And if you notice Buzz's question, I found a page about flies, or two pages about flies. So I'm gonna read those. I included it because I started this book. So I definitely am not reading this whole entire book because look at there's like 122 pages. Whoa, yeah, right. I'm just picking and choosing ones that I thought were interesting. But if you really like this book, oopsie, sorry, 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 sorry. If you really like this book, it doesn't go backwards. Are you kidding me? It looks like this. It's called Why Fly Guy. You could get it on Amazon. I think it's like 12 or $14. It's really not too expensive when I was looking on Amazon. And so if this book interests you and it's something that you want, I highly recommend it because I'm going to show you just a few of my favorites, but there's a lot of cool things. <clears throat> and if you remember in my classroom, I read like the first seven of these to you. I did. It was like, I picked silly ones like why we fart and like why do i have a bruise and like we read a few of them and we, we thought some of them were actually really cool and we learned some things so it says why do i have to brush my teeth this one i thought was a good one and it reminds me of my uncle ale and my aunts on my mom's side of the family not by automatic negative thoughts but my actual aunts and uncles you know so they always would say Brush the teeth you want to keep, floss the teeth. Oh, you only have to floss the teeth you want to keep, Natalie. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And I would roll my eyes at them. But that's why I picked this one. I'm like, oh, this is for my Uncle Ale. Right? So why do I have to brush my teeth? After you eat, some food is left behind. Bacteria turn the leftover food into acid. If you don't clean the acid off, it burns through the tough, thin enamel, enamel, enamel that coats your teeth. Sometimes this leads to a cavity, which is a hole in your tooth. Cavities can make your teeth hurt. So if you eat a lot of, can a lot of candy and you decide you're not going to brush your teeth for a while, that's how cavities form. Because that sugar and the food, you know, all the corn syrup and things and candy break down into this acid that gets stuck on your teeth. You ever eat the candy that gets stuck in your teeth? That stuff, if you don't brush your teeth, that's how cavities happen. And cavities can make your teeth hurt. Bacteria in your mouth can also cause bad breath. Ugh. Brush twice a day 
to keep your mouth and teeth healthy and your breath fresh smelling. And look at this. Buzz says, sharks don't have to brush their teeth. It is normal for their teeth to fall out and grow back over and over. So it says down here, if Fly Guy could talk, hi there. You know, after a long day of dumpster diving, sidewalk licking, and roadkill snacks, it actually feels good to brush my teeth. Flies don't have teeth. I don't think so. It'd be weird. Brush an egg. Here's a science project, you guys. Okay, so this is what you need. So in the notebook page, it says what you will need. A white, hard-boiled egg. Ask an adult to help you with this, okay? Can't just go doing stuff saying Miss Wolf told you to do it. No, no, I'm just giving you ideas for something to do and try, okay? A mason jar or like a small glass mug or a small bowl, okay? 12 to 24 ounces of dark grape juice, a toothbrush and toothpaste. So what to do? Look at the color of the egg after you have put it in the grape juice, okay? Pour enough grape juice into the jar, cover the egg completely, let the egg sit for five hours. Remove and dry the egg. What color is it now? Look at the picture, it shows purple from the grape juice, okay? Put some toothpaste on the toothbrush on a toothbrush, probably not the one you brush your teeth with. I'm just gonna say that. Maybe like if you have like a older one or like something that you're not gonna really use. Brush the egg and then see what happens. Note, do not eat the egg you used in this project. It's probably not good. Because if it's out of the fridge for a long time, remember what we said about it, it gets old and your tummy's gonna hurt. Okay, so now, why do I suddenly feel hungry? Why, fly guy? The shell of a hard-boiled egg is a lot like a tooth. The grape juice is left behind on the egg, but brushing the egg with toothpaste makes it clean again. So it's kind of like your teeth when you're eating or drinking juice or having all that food, it gets stuck on your teeth. And if you don't brush your teeth, it stays there and turns into acid. But this shows you if you brush the egg, it will be clean again. Get out, so fun. Okay, so that might be something to try at home if you talk to a parent and see if they're cool with this. It'd be fun, something to try. And also, if you do try it, send me a picture. That'd be so sweet. Or send me pictures or a video because some of you are good at that. You can send it to me, right? I'd be so happy to see it, okay? Now, remember the first page where Buzz is asking Fly Guy why they buzz? That's on the second page, but let me read the first one. Why do flies have compound eyes? So look at the picture on the bottom. It shows what a fly actually sees. So they see like 12 buzzes, 16 buzzes. Sorry, I counted wrong. I'm not, it's getting too late. I should probably stop reading and all this stuff. But anyways, why do flies have compound eyes? And so if you look at the bottom, that's what it means by compound eyes. So, if you think of our eyes, each of your eyes has one lens, right? We got one lens here, one lens here. But house flies have compound eyes. Each compound eye has thousands of lenses. So not even, they couldn't even fit it on this page, you guys. I'm totally like getting all sidetracked here. So they have thousands of lenses. So flies can see in almost every direction. That means they don't have to turn their head to see. Above, below, or behind them. They don't have to turn around to see anything because it's, and look at the top of it, that fly's eyes right there, the red things. Whoa, look at all those lenses. There's thousands of them. It's crazy. Pretty fascinating once you start learning about all these things, you guys. Nonfiction is so cool. All right. The last paragraph says compound eyes are great at detecting movement. If something gets close, a fly can plan an escape route in less than one hundredth of a second. So think about it. One one thousand. Already gone. Already like had a million plans to get away from you. Get out of here. That's so cool. Now look at the other page. It says, why do flies buzz in green? It says that green page. House flies make a buzzing sound when they fly. This sound is made 
by the beating of their two wings. A fly's wings move up and down. Look at this. Move up and down about 200 times in one second. So again, one 1,000. They flap their wings 200 times. Unreal. One second, 200 times. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? That's insane. Now look at Buzz. He says that flies are one of the fastest insects. If they're one of the fastest insects, I would like to look up what is the fastest insect? What is the fastest insect? Flies are one of them. Are they the fastest? What is the fastest? I want to look that up later. Okay, look at this. I think your day two reading assignment is a little bit about this too. So you might have a little jump ahead of the game with your nonfiction reading. Why do tornadoes form? A funnel cloud can form when a powerful thunderstorm meets winds that change direction as they move up into the sky. If the funnel cloud touches the ground, it is called a tornado. If a funnel cloud touches water, it is called a water spout. Did not know that's what you called it. So if the funnel cloud touches ground, it's a tornado. If it is a funnel cloud that touches water, it's a water spout. What in the world? If you hear a tornado siren, seek shelter right away. Yeah, that would be the most safe thing to do. Don't be like my dad. My dad likes to stay until like the last possible second of danger. I know this because my mom. <laughs> She mentions it. She's like, I don't even want to, I don't even want to tell your dad to go down in the basement because he'll just go out on the back porch and watch for a tornado until it comes towards the house and it'll make me nervous. Stuff like that happens, right? Science project. Let's look at the yellow page. Make or I'm having a hard time talking. Like I feel like I have marbles in my mouth. Make a tornado in a jar. So if you have a jar, maybe you'll have these items at home. A mason jar with a lid, water, about two tablespoons of dishwashing detergent, glitter, optional. So look what you, what you do. You add water to the jar until it is three quarters full, like the picture. Squirt the dishwashing detergent into the jar. Add glitter. Screw on the cap tightly. Spin the jar in a spiral motion. For about 30 seconds, watch what happens. Tip, if the liquid is too cloudy, let the jar sit for 10 to 15 minutes. Then try again. So let's figure out why this works. Why, fly guy? When you spin the jar, you create a spinning column of water, your very own funnel cloud. This is the same thing that happens when a powerful thunderstorm meets winds that change direction. So when wind like quickly changes direction, that's how the funnel is formed. Like all this changing spiral direction, it makes it like spiral. Now look at this one. Why does glue stick? When you place one solid surface against another, tiny gaps between the two of them from keep the two of them from sticking together because glue is a liquid. It fills in these gaps. Once the glue hardens and dries, it creates a strong bond between the two surfaces. So have you ever gotten sap from a pine tree or a pine cone on your hands or clothes? It's very sticky. That's because sap is a natural glue. So look at the picture. It shows you like the dripping sap. That's a natural glue. And here's the girl, she's gluing something together. She's got a craft idea. She's got some feathers in her hair. She's ready to rock. Oh, where's, no, no, no. I took a picture. You guys, I'll have to add it. Darn, I must have forgot to take pictures of the activity. I'll add it separately to this book as material, a picture of, how to make glue out of milk, and the other one about this one. Now, I read this to you before, but I think it's so interesting. I wanna read it again. I wanna read it a million times because I think it's super interesting. Why do stop signs 
have eight sides. When states first started using street signs, it was decided that a sign's shape would show the danger level. So look at the shape of the sign when it was created a long time ago was to show you the danger level. Okay, so look at the signs, the different signs. Okay, so generally signs for the most dangerous things had the most sides. A circle was used for the railroad crossing because that shape was thought to be made of many, 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 many sides put together to make a circle. Long ago, they believed a circle had millions of sides to create it. It's something to think about. It's kind of interesting that, you know, because that idea isn't, I don't think, so untrue. So since a circle was believed to have millions of sides, okay, put together, I think I might be exaggerating with the millions, but like a lot of sides put together to make the circle look like a circle. That's why the railroad sign is a circle, okay? So then the eight-sided octagon was chosen for the stop sign. So it's very important to stop, right? Now diamonds were used for like general warnings, like this road is a little curvy, right? Squares and rectangles were used for directions or other information. So think of a street sign, like what street you're on. It's a rectangle. So squares, like when you're on the interstate and you see the two towns on the exit ramp, squares and rectangles were for directions and just information like, oh, that town is off this ramp on exit 259. Also look at the bottom, what Buzz is telling us. Stop signs weren't always red. Early stop signs were yellow with black letters. Interesting. But I guess the more they realized how important it was to make it stand out with the other signs, right? Pretty cool information. Now there's two things I forgot to include on here and I will do that. If I forget, remind me. And then that will tell me who's watching this video. And I'll be like, wow, bonus for so-and-so. They've been watching this whole time. So anyways, I hope you enjoy this. I love this fly, fly guy book. I got one for Oscar and Elliot because it's so cool. When you ask, when you have all those questions and you ask questions, like most of these questions like Oscar and Elliot have, like are answered, like, why do you poop? It's in there. It's in this book. But I, I didn't want that kind of goofiness today. All right, you guys. Hope you enjoy it. I love nonfiction. I could keep going. I was looking for my sea otter book and I didn't know where it was. I love sea otters. I loved that book that we read about them. It was so good. Maybe I'll go on Epic and look at it and read it. Also, reminder, you can, now that you have your iPad, get on Epic. If you give me your parents' email, like your whoever you live with's email it will easily connect you to my classroom and you can easily get on from home internet access for some reason some I, ipads recognize they're not at school anymore and then they ask for the parent email and then you'll get into my classroom so just comment or message me if that's something you want and then you can look at all kinds of books on epic okay all right you guys Miss Wolf's getting tired. She spent the entire day making videos for the week. So Miss Wolf is going to be done after this one, I think. <laughs> we'll see, right? All right, you guys. I love you. I miss you. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the videos I'm posting. Take your time. Hope you enjoy this book too, because it's kind of interesting. Makes me want to read more of it, right? Okay, all right, I'm done. I gotta stop talking. I'm talking too much. All right, later. Peace.